They say all good things must come to an end, and today we finish off the Cherry 3D Printer project. Hey everyone, James here. Welcome back to the final episode on the Cherry 3D Printer project. Today we're going to walk through the successes and failures of the project, a final breakdown of the cost, do a review of the printer and its print quality, and then we'll get to how to get into the giveaway and what the winner is going to get. Now one of the main goals of this project was to increase the build volume of the original design. At just 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, the build volume of the original one was best suited to toys and trinkets. By simply leveraging larger smooth rods and inverting the way the hot end was mounted, the build volume of the modified cherry printer is fairly generous at 175 on the X, by 175 on the Y, by 180 on the Z. This works out to a build volume that's roughly five times greater than the original and brings it much closer to the build volume of most of the i3 clones. Next was portability. By creating legs for the printer and having it sit higher, I was able to mount the electronics in the extruder underneath. This resulted in a printer design that literally can be carried in one hand. I tested the portability of this printer last weekend when I took it with me to my hometown for Canadian Thanksgiving. The printer made stops at two houses and after having traveled some 500 kilometers without any great amount of care taken to protect it, it was up and printing at both locations within a couple of minutes. Note to the wise, if you bring a 3D printer with you anywhere, especially where there are children, you can expect to spend a lot of time printing. I have some nieces and nephews that are very happy with the little toys I was able to print and the printer had no problem chugging away all weekend. Next, I wanted to improve and add on to the original parts provided. The original parts are pretty spartan and they do exactly what is needed and nothing more. I modified the original design of some of the parts to allow for easy insertion of the bearings. While the parts I printed worked fairly well with a bit of cleanup, I wanted to make sure that the printer was even easier to assemble and also allowed for more variance in the quality of prints from other printers. Then I designed parts that would help mount the Bowden tube, the X limit switch, the Z limit switch adjustment screw, and allow for easier cable management. All of these files will be provided through Thingiverse very shortly. Finally, I wanted to make sure the printer would be able to print copies of itself. While this goal highlighted one of the main drawbacks of using the 28BYJ motors, namely that small circles are fairly difficult for them to print, the parts I printed were still clean enough to allow insertion of the smooth rods in the bearings, so I think we can check this goal off as a success. Now let's take a look at the failures. I had hoped to squeeze out some extra performance. The original machine claimed to have a travel speed of about 20 millimeters a second with a print speed of about 10 millimeters a second. While my x-axis was able to handle about 13 millimeters a second during prints, the y-axis capped out at just 9 millimeters a second. Even when the printers had no load on them, I was unable to hit the 20 millimeters a second advertised in the original without missing steps. This may be a quality difference in the motors between, you know, like mine and the originals, so I plan to test out some ver different variants of the motors in the future and see if that's the case. Second, I had intended to build this printer as a fully contained Wi-Fi enabled printer using an Orange Pi Zero. While I was able to get OctoPrint up and running on the Orange Pi without too much struggle, the Wi-Fi connectivity on it was iffy at best, and there was a couple occasions where the Pi just seemed to freeze mid-print, leaving the printer stationary but with the hot end still switched on. I believe this is a problem with the Pi, however, and I will be trying it again in the future once the new one that I ordered arrives. So now let's jump into the cost breakdown for this unit. After a quick review of the parts and what was needed to get the printer up and running, here's the breakdown. As you can see, the parts came out to just under $100 US, which is just over $120 Canadian. There are a few spots where we can save some money on it, however. I used 1x4 project wood. This was a bit more expensive than the original MDF, so you could opt to use MDF here, or you could even use some scrap wood recovered from somewhere for even more savings. You also don't need to paint it. I chose to do that because I thought the black on orange would look good, and for the cost of $1.50 for a can of spray paint, it seemed like a no-brainer for me. I built mine using an all-aluminum extruder. I found a design for an extruder that would use two of the 28BYJ motors instead. This would add several printed parts, as well as a couple of screws and a couple of springs, but it would end up saving you the cost of a NEMA 17 motor as well as the cost of the extruder, working out to savings in roughly around the $10 range. The V6 clone hot end that I used could be swapped out for a V5 clone. These can be had for a few dollars cheaper and would likely deliver similar print quality in this application, but at the cost of some of your Z height. Finally, the end stops I used were mounted on circuit boards and were easier to use. You can get away with a cheaper solution and save yourself about $1.50 there. Altogether, savings would range between $15 and $20 US or between $18 and $24 Canadian. If you aren't in a hurry, you can also wait and watch for the parts to go on sale. I've seen the LM8 UU bearings drop for as low as $3 for 12 So, with a bit of patience, this build could be had at an even cheaper price. 
Now let's talk about the quality of the printer. Is it a good printer? Well, I think it's hard to gauge that without adding the term at its price point to the end. It took me a bit of work to tune this printer to the point where the prints were beyond passable to, and to the point where I would consider them good. With some types of print, such as this low polygon skull, the printer just excelled. The quality is actually pretty nice. We see a similar story with this low polygon Charmander, as well as this low polygon Pikachu. But these three prints also highlight one of the weaknesses of the printer. I printed all three of them simultaneously and the print took nearly 12 hours. So while you can get some pretty nice prints out of them, you're not going to get them quickly. This Benchy shows that it's capable of printing some nice even layer lines, but it doesn't handle overhangs particularly well, even with active cooling. Like with most printers, vase mode makes it seem like a speedy little boss. The vase here represents the tallest build volume of the printer, and it really does look nice. I ended up printing this vase three times. Once as a gift, once as a failure, where the spool got jammed and it just couldn't feed filament anymore, and it wasn't really the fault of the printer, and this one here. There's a slight amount of noise in the print, but I think they look pretty good, to be completely honest. So is it a good printer? Well, I think it is. I enjoy using it, and I got a certain amount of satisfaction every time I made a change that resulted in better prints. Is it a good first printer? Well, again, that depends. If you're planning on using your printer to build little trinkets like Pikachu or Charmander or any of the small stuff, it's going to do a great job. And if that's your only goal, then yeah, it's going to handle that no problem. If you're looking for something to be able to do functional prints, well, then you have to reevaluate. What kind of functional parts are you going to be printing? Are they large? Are they small? Uh, as we know, it doesn't handle overhangs or small circles particularly well, so if the functional prints you're planning to do require good overhang performance or fine tight circles, then this isn't the route to go. I do think it makes a great second printer, and I also think it's a great educational piece. Um, building this printer was a great experience, and it would be good to do with a child as well, because it really brings you through the basics. Even though the design of the printer is slightly different than a standard 3D printer, it still explains how everything works, and uh, I think that's just great. Now let's get to the part everybody's been waiting for, the giveaway. The Gleam link is listed below, and you can click on it, follow the directions, and enter to win. But what are you going to win? Well, you're going to win a printed set of parts for the cherry printer in the color of your choice. In addition, I'm going to kick in the rest of the roll to get you started. And to help you get started, I'm going to include an Arduino with a ramp shield and four stepper motor drivers. Also included are four 28 BYJ stepper motors, one NEMA 17 stepper motor for the extruder, an all aluminum extruder, a hot end, a 12 volt power supply, a set of LM8 UU bearings, a set of 628ZZ bearings, and some other bits and pieces that should help offset the cost of this printer. I'm not going to promise that it's going to be a complete printer kit, but it should get you pretty close to your goal. And there you have it. The first tutorial on print and play is officially done. The cherry printer is ready to go. And uh, the CR10 back here has been working overtime on parts for the next project that's going to start up in the next week or two, so I hope you guys will stick around for that. Um, in the meantime, I've got a ton of stuff that's built up for either reviewed or be disassembled or just to be played with that's going to be popping up, so it's going to be a busy few weeks. As always, if you have questions, comments, or an idea for a future project, toss in the comments below. I read every comment there and I try to reply to as many of them as possible. If you're new here, click the subscribe button and the bell so you can keep track of what I'm working on. If you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, a thumbs up's always appreciated. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching till the end. And until next time, stay creative.